Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering UiPath Forward Americas 2019. Brought to you by UiPath. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of UiPath Forward. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, co-hosting alongside of Dave Vellante. We're joined by Param Cologne. He is the Chief Product Officer at UiPath. Thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me here. So, Big week. Yes. yes. You've been busy. <laughs> I have been busy. Thank you, David. <laughs> so this morning you were up on the main stage and you were sort of giving, giving the audience a state of play of business today. And you were lamenting, saying, wasn't technology supposed to make our lives easier? Wasn't it supposed to free us from the mundane and supposed to make us more efficient? And yet, Quasim hasn't quite ended up that way. And you had, you had the quote, the famous quote, we see computers everywhere except in the productivity statistics um, from Robert Lasolo, the Nobel right. winner. Uh, can, can you riff on that a little bit, and, and particularly within the context of the RPA market? Yeah, isn't it exciting? I mean, we really have so much technology that we live in today, yet we're busier. We're doing more mundane work than we've ever done before. We're more stressed than ever before. That just seems sort of paradoxical to me that you know all this stuff that was supposed to give us more time to do the things that we wanted to do, yet we keep doing the repetitive robot type work that you know we thought technology will free us from. And I think that's fascinating that you know that that's happening. And I think you know, there's a few you know theories on why we think that's happening, I think it's happening because business has gotten a lot more complex. You know, companies are having to change business models on the fly. Digital transformation is affecting, you know, standard companies, regulated industries in ways that they did not imagine, and companies don't know how to cope and manage all the technology well. And this is where I think RPA is really, really useful because it can help you change the processes, modernize the processes without having to go change, rip and replace the existing systems systems, you know, do the work that you were going to hire humans to do in moving data, moving processes from one system to another, do that through robots. And that's where our robots can help free the humans to be able to focus on the things they matter, the things that they care about, right? That's, that's really the, what the beauty of the RPA is. So I wonder if we can help our audience, you know, understand UiPath a little bit better. Yeah. Um, you know, Daniel talks about, how is it that UiPath has ascended so quickly? And you, you, see, you appear to be achieving escape velocity. You kind of started out, you know, third, fourth, whatever it was, and now you're sort of number one in all these quadrants and waves, and 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 so I want. So yesterday you talked about five pillars, and I want to I want to unpack them a little bit. Open platform, rapid results, which I think is around ROI, path to AI, scalability, and trust. So here's my question. Any one of your competitors could say the same thing. Oh yes, we're open. Oh, we get rapid. All right. So what makes UiPath different? I think actually not just saying those words, but making it happen, right? So anybody can say we've opened, we've done something, but do people actually have 400,000 community members that are actually using the platform on an active basis? Can you actually go to a website over the last two years and download the software and use it? How long does it take you to sign up for a cloud service that we have made available? What does it take for you to do that? I think all of the things that we've invested in and in really enabling engagement with the community, right? Making it open, not just from a technology perspective, but from a people perspective as well, are the things that have differentiated ourselves. And, and, and those can be very generic terms that you're right, other people can use as well, but I think we live those terms, right? We actually do everything in the product from the business perspective to make sure that openness is embraced. You know, we when we look at building new capabilities, new products, we focus on, is it actually going to help our customers customers get quicker value, right? Is it going to help them reduce five clicks to be able to get that process done? And if so, then we should build this feature because it will make it easier and engage more people in the audience, more people at the customer to be able to get work done. So we're super excited about bringing all those capabilities. Okay, so a big part of that is the product. I mean, right. if, you have, if you have a great product, that, that always helps. It's not, it's not the, uh, uh, the sole condition, but it, it helps a lot. Yeah. And many times we see leaders that don't have the best product, but I'm guessing you feel as though you have the best product. So, uh, architecturally, um, what is it about UiPath that's different, that's, that differentiates you? 
Yeah, I think the, the core difference is, I'd say fundamentally at a company level, is in our culture, right? This is a culture that's built around customers. This is a culture that's built around humility. This is a culture that's built around getting things done and being fast about it, right? You, you saw a lot of product innovation that we did. If he told you a year ago, we're going to do all this, we'd have laughed at their face, right? We're going to continue to do that pace at the pace that market wants. And I think that is the fundamental difference in us versus you know, the rest of the companies out there. You know, I'd also like to believe that you know, we are, from a technology perspective, we have an edge because we didn't start with the legacy of doing RPA many, many years ago. We have a much more modern stack. You said, you alluded to the fact that you know, we came in from behind and we've taken sort of the number one place very quickly. I think part of that is the architecture decisions that we made are more modern, are not vetted in a lot of legacy that are helping us bring more rapid innovation to the market, that are helping us build more resilient technology that's helping our customers achieve the outcomes, the goals that they want to be able to do more easily easily on our platform. We have a number of our customers that actually did not start with us. They started with one of our competitors and they said, we started, we thought it was going to work, it didn't. We came to UiPath and we saw that actually it works, right? And that's a testament to the technology that we built that's actually helping deliver the results that our customers expected to. So, you know, I, I, sorry Rebecca, go ahead. I was just going to say that one of the other things you said this morning was that bots allow you to focus on you, focus on the more creative aspects of your job. Right. You brought up some customers, the PepsiCo and Nielsen into. Can you can you describe sort of how you're helping customers focus on themselves? I mean, I mean these employees who are now you're taking away the tedium and that's great and they're, they're giddy about that. But how how are they then channeling that energy into strategy, innovation, and, and the sort of more value added things? Yeah, you know I'll give you a really quick example of a customer that I work with. It's a bank, and um, you know in this bank it's a retail bank and. And what used to happen before we had deployed UiPad was the banker had to go to like six different applications and pull reports of the customer they were about to go meet, print them all out, review the data, and be able to suggest what the customer's unique needs might be, right? So for that half an hour appointment with the customer, it used to take that, that banker another half an hour to get ready for that appointment. With after the deployed UiPath robots, UiPath robots now go pull up the data from the customer, from those you know, six different core banking systems, and be able to feed that to a machine learning system to suggest what their unique needs might be. So they need five minutes to get ready for that appointment. They're more ready for that appointment and they deliver a better outcome. You know, People want to help other people, right? They don't want to go to systems and print reports and, and read them and, and understand what it might be. They really want to be able to go meet with the customer and help solve their problems, that helps you know, help the customer, but also help the business goals for the bank. And, and that's what makes the people that are using our technology more happier, right? It, it makes them freeze them up to say that instead of now spending half an hour printing stuff, I now have that extra 25 minutes, because I need, still need five minutes to get ready, I have the extra 25 minutes to think about what else can I do to further and more creative aspects of my job, or maybe I have, don't have to work as hard as I did in the past. I wonder if I could ask you about, uh, I've been drawing parallels today with another company, ServiceNow, that I've been tracking for a long time. And they started out in this kind of narrow change management, uh, ITSM, ITSM space, ITSM, yeah. and then expanded their TAM dramatically. And you shared with us yesterday and today in the keynote, um, you got RPA for devs and testers, you know, Studio T, that yeah. targets 2% you know, of the market. And then you got the citizen developers, that's Studio X, that expands it to 10%. Business analysts, uh, which is Explorer and Insights, that gets you to 25%. And then apps, where automation is the apps. That was a little fuzzy to me, so I want to dig into it a little bit, yeah, but that's 100% sure. of the market. Yeah. That's your, whatever it is, 20, 30, 40, 50 yeah. billion dollar TAM. Um, my question is this, I was going to the uh, event last night and I ran into some business analysts. So you're already you know, working with those folks. So you, it seems like you're learning from folks that are sort of using a product that was maybe developed for testers and devs 
but they're using it today as business analysts and you're improving that. Can you help us just understand your product strategy right. just in terms of what you've announced and how it dovetails into those segments that we just talked about? Absolutely, so you know, our product strategy isn't tied to like, what are we going to do to you know, grow our TAM and other stuff. Mm -hmm. Our marketing organization gets super excited about that, Bobby's all over that. But really, everything we've done in the product today is, is about listening to customers, understanding what their needs are, what do they want us to grow into, and what are the capabilities they want us to go build, right? So we've expanded to Studio X, not because we thought you know, everybody should have a Studio X, but we actually had customers that took our product, the Studio product, and said, we want to roll this out to every single user within the enterprise, right? Because they thought that every, use, every person has unique needs and they should be able to build the bots for themselves. Well, they came back and told us, well, we wanted to do that, but this isn't really quite ready for all of our you know, accountants. This isn't quite ready for all of our business analysts. Can you actually make it simple? All of these people use Excel. Can you make it look like Excel, right? So we took all of that feedback and that's what we focused on building Studio X so we can make sure that we meet the needs of the market. And every single single pillar of the investment that we've done is focused around making sure that we're able to meet those requirements around this stuff. Automation is the application, I want to go to that. And, and that also came from, like, you know, there's different kinds of, if you look at, um, take, a, take a product like analytics, right? are reporting. Different people within the organization have different kinds of needs. There's people that are like, hey, I want to create my own reports, I want to slice and dice, I want to understand the trends, and I'm going to use it this way. Then there's somebody who says, oh, I want to bring more data into that, and I want to do data joins, and I really am going, I'm a data junkie, I'm going to build a data model around it. And then there's users that are like, I just want to use the reports. I don't, I want somebody else to build them, I just want this report every Monday morning, those are more executives, that are like, I just want to look at the data, let me tell you when I report it, and I'm just going to use it, I'm just an end user. And that's what we're trying to do, it's like, from an automation perspective, there's people that have different types of needs. There's going to be people that are true developers, RPA developers that we've targeted with Studio. Then there's people that are business analysts that are like, I can do some stuff with it. I'm not going to spend eight hours a day, every day, working on it. I may spend two hours once a week building something that's relevant for me, right? And that's what Studio X is targeted to. But then there's a whole lot of other users that are like, I don't want to build anything myself, but I want to use it. Things that are relevant for me. These are people maybe like contact center agents that are taking orders from customers. So in a, in a, let's say in a, in a typical Fortune you know, 500 company, if you hired a person to take orders today, you'd have to go train that person in at least 10 different applications to be able to take orders, right? You'll have to show them how it works, when a customer calls, if it's a material order, take it in this SAP system, if it's a this order that came through and acquired a company, take it in that system, that takes a lot of time. What is the, the call center agent, the order taking person doing? They're essentially capturing some very basic information from the customer that are saying, I am this customer, I want this, this, and this product to be shipped at this address, and tell me when you can ship it and what is the price for that. What we're trying to do with that application is give that order agent a very simple interface where they can punch at the three things simply and get the results back that the customer cares about without having to learn how to jump hoops across these 15 different applications to be able to enter that. Because the robots can learn those applications and take what you have put into that interface and do the work of putting and cascading that data and extracting information from those systems. Mm -hmm. That is the concept behind automation is the application. Sounds like a killer yeah. app. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, I like to say it that way as well. I want to ask you about cloud, because you guys announced the ability, and I did it, I went and downloaded, not downloaded, but I signed up, yeah. it took seconds. Yeah. I mean, it was simple, and now I got to invite other people and start yeah. you know, digging in. But we saw this was CRM, email, uh, service management, HR, now even analytic databases, all got sassified. Right. I, I'm curious as to why, not really it took so long, why, why didn't you start with SAS? Is, it, is there something unique about RPA? Is it because Daniel was a Microsoft guy pre-Azure? I mean, and, and will this industry eventually go all SaaS, or will it be hybrid, or? 
I think it's like any other workload in the enterprise. Um, there's some customers that are want to remain, going to want to remain on premise because that's who they are, that's what they do. Governance compliance, governance all compliance, security, you know, right. we're special. And then there's other customers that are like, you know, we're we're going with where the rest of the world is going. We're going to let this data center work in in a cloud that we believe is secure, has the governance and compliance. So I think we're meeting customers where they are, right? We're going to continue to support on-premise deployments. We will continue to support deployments for customers that want to deploy in private cloud infrastructure, and we'll keep deploying, you know, customers that want to use in SaaS. Your question was, why did it take so long for this to go to that? You know, I think there's a, my theory behind that is that a lot of the automations that are happening are touching systems that are only available on-premise. Some of these are affecting systems that haven't moved to the cloud. So companies are saying, well, I've got to put my robot on-premise because it's got to touch this application that's on-premise. I might as well deploy the whole infrastructure on-premise. And what we've done with the cloud services have given you the options. You will definitely run the infrastructure in the cloud that manage and govern the robots, and you can decide to run the robots on-premise, or you can decide to run the robots in the cloud as, as VMs and, and machines in any data center. So the, if, if I can uh, put it in my words, the data lives on-prem. Yes. So you're bringing the automation to where the data lives, independent of, uh, of you know, the cloud version. So, so that's really why, and so there's latency issues, we mentioned the other ones, compliance, governance, you know, security, et cetera, but, but there's got to be performance implications as well, right? If you got a lot of data on-prem, you want to be on-prem. Again, it, yeah, it just depends upon, if, if you've got a lot of data on-prem, if and more importantly, the business applications that you're using, let's say you're trying to automate a process in a mainframe application that hasn't moved to any, any cloud yet, it's sitting on a server mm -hmm. in the on-premise environment, and the robot can only access it if it's deployed in a machine that sits within the same network, then you've got to put the robot in there that can, can access it uh, there as well. It so makes sense, it's not, a, it's not a standalone application, it's, it's automated other apps and touching exactly. other, it's got dependencies all over the place. So. Exactly. So it's, 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 it's sort of like the lowest common de denominator, right? If, if every application you're touching is the cloud, there's no reason you want to put the robot on premise. You would want to put the robot in the cloud as well. But the reality is that people have moved some applications to the cloud, but not every application to the cloud that the business process is touching. Well, a lot of ERP, a lot of financials. Yeah. I would imagine the, the, the folks I talked to last night were insurance industry, so. Yeah. They they, yeah, those yeah. industries have, have a lot of homegrown systems yeah. built a long time ago. So there's been a lot of exciting product announcements at this conference, but I want you to talk about what's coming up ahead. What are we, what are sort of some of the things that you're working on that are most exciting to you as these bots become smarter, more durable, and more able to take on complex techs? What are we going to be talking about at next year's UiPath? Yeah, I think that's yeah, a really interesting question. I think you'll hear us um, talk next year about a few things. One is, we started a lot of initiatives this year and we're going to release you know, the, the version one of many of our products this time. We're going to keep focusing on making sure we make them enterprise ready. We take the feedback across the customers and make it ready for what they're able to do. I think another key initiative that we're focused on is contact center, right? We see mass adoption of our technology in contact centers. And today what we do is we give our customers a components to be able to deploy in call center, but we don't actually have a finished solution for call centers. Call centers have a lot of op automation opportunities. We'll build a more finished solution for contact centers. Um, the other stuff that you'll hear us do more next year is this, the concept of applications. So we have some ways to build applications today, but I think we're going to grow that application, ability to create applications, compose applications very quickly, and do, you'll hear us do a lot more in next year there. Well, we'll look forward to hearing about it. <laughs> I really look forward to telling you next year. Thanks for coming on. Yes. Thank you so much, Pram. Thank you so much. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. That wraps up day one of UiPath Forward. Come back tomorrow for more.